Welcome, foolish mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show 101. I am your host, your ghost host, <laughs> West Truth. And we're back this week with another lesson in Disney Parks history. That's right, uh, we're continuing our way through Fantasyland. In 1955 of some attractions that were there or are still there at Disneyland and we've made our way to a very popular ride a very sore subject for some people because they no longer have it at the Magic Kingdom but they have it still in Disneyland so um, it's a ride that many people enjoy still to this day or are salty about because they can't ride it <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. That's right, we're going to hell. <laughs> let's see Mr. Toad. Fantasyland, whether it be Disneyland's version or the Magic Kingdom, many guests will say one of their favorite attractions is, or was, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. The ride was loosely based on Walt Disney's somewhat obscure 1949 animated movie, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. The film contained two separate parts, one retelling the story of Sleepy Hollow, and the other The Wind in the Willows with its main character, J. Thaddeus Toad. Imagineers didn't want to retell the story of The Wind in the Willows for the attraction, but instead used the characters and spirit of the film in a wild motor car ride. Much like Peter Pan's flight and Snow White's scary adventures, the writer would take the role of the main character and see it from the perspective of Mr. Toad. At one point, the attraction was planned to be a smaller roller coaster with the ride vehicles following a downward track that would head towards obstacles such as parked cars that would move out of the way just in time. Walt Disney himself 
axed the idea, though, thinking it would be too wild for the smaller children or elderly to enjoy, so the attraction was toned down a bit. Imagineers Ken Anderson and Claude Coates designed the sets and interior of the attraction. The Imagineers came up with a somewhat wild idea for the end of the attraction, where the riders would appear to be hit by a train and sent to hell for the finale. Surprisingly, Walt approved of the idea. While the ride building was being constructed at Disneyland, a mock version of the attraction was set up on a soundstage at Walt Disney Studios. Bill Martin was in charge of working on the track layout, and Arrow Development worked on the ride system, which of course included the vehicles. Each vehicle was made from 200 pounds of fiberglass and sheet metal and included a one-quarter horsepower electric motor. Each motor car tilts backwards slightly to permit a small guide wheel to follow a single T-rail on, on the floor, which whisks them through the corridors and streets of the ride. There were a total of 12 cars. Nine would be on the line to operate and three were, were extra in case of a breakdown. The motor cars are basically the same ones used today and are named after characters from the film, including Moly, Ratty, Weasel, Winky, and of course, Mr. Toad himself. The ride itself would last a total of 1 minute and 38 seconds. Much like the other Fantasyland attractions, the outside of the ride was designed like a medieval pavilion. There was also a very detailed mural in the queue as well. The original attraction kicked off in Toad Hall as the Merrily song welcomed us to the world of Mr. Toad. We're merrily, merrily, merrily on our way to nowhere in particular. Okay. The motor car drove by books of shelves and a falling suit of armor. The vehicles would look as if they were about to run into characters such as a mole and a policeman which were drawn on painted flats. They would swing out of the way as the vehicle approached. As you went into the English countryside, the sounds of whistles, headlights, signs saying wrong way, and more all flashed in front of the rider. Ooh, a flashers. The motor cars sped past storefronts and through a warehouse full of stacked boxes and barrels ready to fall onto the riders. Of course, the bark boxes were marked with TNT, explosives, and nitro because that's what you do with those things. You just stack them on top of each other. From here, the vehicles went into a railroad tunnel and came face to face with what seemed to be a train engine coming right for them. After this, riders came to the devil's mouth and entered the jaws of hell, being greeted by a sign that read, Welcome in Fiberglass Flames. They then came upon Disneyland's version of Hades and cut out cow devils, which were nicknamed by their horns and the shape of their tails. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride officially opened on Disneyland's opening day of July 17, 1955. In 1961, a few additions were brought onto the ride, including improved doors, revised figures, and the cutout devils in the hell scene were replaced with rubber figures. When Imagineers were planning out Fantasyland for the Magic Kingdom, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride was a must. The Disneyland version of the attraction was a massive hit, which resulted in very long lines. Because of this, the version at the Magic Kingdom would be designed to accommodate a larger number of guests. This put the Imagineers on the project, including Rolly Crump, up to a larger task. The ride vehicles were updated to have two rows of seats instead of one, and the ride itself would include two tracks that would go through different versions of the ride and come together for one scene. This would also result in two separate boarding areas. The ride's exterior was an updated version of the tournament tent style of the Disneyland's original Fantasyland. On the right track, Riders passed through the library, similar to the Disneyland version, then broke out of Toad Hall and passed through a barnyard, encountering a sheep, a pig, and a couple of cows along the way. After passing through a small tunnel with several warning signs, known as the One-Way Street, riders made a turn into the central plaza. The vehicles passed a policeman, signaling riders to stop with his whistle. Guests then made a right-hand turn into the courtroom and saw a judge, which in this version was actually a policeman holding a gavel. No, it wasn't Judge Judy. <laughs> Upon making another right-hand turn, the vehicles passed by several policemen and weasel convicts and then entered several weasel-filled jail cells. After winding through the cells, the vehicles emerged out into Shireland, 
which there were no hobbits here though, passing by a shootout between the police and some weasels, which was simulated by red lights. They didn't actually have a shootout. Anyway, several of the policemen barriers then moved aside, revealing a railroad crossing complete with a ringing bell. The gate moved aside, presumably breaking apart, and the vehicles made a right-hand turn onto the tracks. The vehicles traveled along the railroad tracks until getting quote-unquote hit by the train, with guests seeing the headlight of the locomotive. A door then opened, revealing the hell scene. Afterwards, riders went through a door back to the boarding area. The left track was a bit different from the Disneyland version. It passed through three scenes not seen in the right track. Toad's trophy room, a kitchen, and a gypsy camp. After going through the one-way street and rounding the plaza, instead of entering the courtroom, riders continued on and entered Winky's Tavern. Mr. Winky, also a nickname for... Never mind. <laughs> the bartender, who was holding two beer mugs, could be seen ducking down, leaving the mug spinning in the air. The vehicles then made a right-hand turn, and the guests could see the weasels hiding out in the tavern among the ale barrels. Following this, riders emerged into the night countryside. Passing by Ratty's house, where Ratty only appeared once and Molly was seen on a boat. I'm on a boat! <laughs> the vehicles then reached the railroad crossing. This gate moved aside and vehicles made a left-hand turn onto the railroad tracks. As on the right track, the headlight of the locomotive was visible before the train quote-unquote hit the guests. The hell scene on this track was merely a mirror image of the right track's hell sequence. The Walt Disney World version began running on the Magic Kingdom's opening day, October 1st, 1971. Back at Disneyland, the massive Fantasyland refurbishment saw big changes for Mr. Toad. The original version of the ride was replaced in 1982. The tracks were ripped up and the show building interior was gutted. The facade of the attraction was also torn off. The ride was rebuilt with a new exterior, larger loading area, new scenes, and additional gags. The current version of Disneyland's Mr. Toad's Wild Ride opened in 1983 along with the rest of the new Fantasyland. Guests now enter the queue, which is a recreation of Toad Hall, passing by artistic works of characters from The Wind and the Willows. A large mural shows the adventures of Toad and his motor car, foreshadowing various scenes of the ride. Riders then board the motor car vehicle. Guests begin the journey by crashing into the library, where Mick Badger is seen teetering atop a ladder with a stack of books. They then crash through the fireplace, where fiber optic effects simulate the scattering of embers on the floor. Barely avoiding the falling suit of armor, riders break through a set of doors to find the interior hallway of Toad Hall as weasels swing from chandeliers. Swing from the chandelier! <laughs> like Sia. Anyway, into the dining room where Molly, Mole Mole Mole, is eating at a dinner table and gets knocked aside. After leaving Toad Hall, the vehicles travel through the countryside, passing Ratty's house, aggravating policemen and terrifying a farmer and his sheep. Making a right turn, guests head for the docks, but turn in a different direction to enter the warehouse containing the crates of explosives and through a brick wall as the warehouse's contents explode. They then head out into the streets of London. Ah, woo! <laughs> Narrowly avoid a collision with a delivery truck and enter Winky's Pub, much like the Magic Kingdom version. Riders then enter the town square, where the car wreaks further havoc on the citizens. A working fountain featuring Toad and C Cyril Proudbottom stands in the center of the town. Behind this statue is one of our Lady Justice peeking out from under her blindfold. Next, guests enter the juryless courtroom where the riders are proclaimed guilty by the judge, based on the film's prosecutor from The Crown. The cars then enter what is presumed to be a dark prison cell before turning right and landing on railroad tracks. The vehicles bounce along the tracks in the dark before colliding head-on with the oncoming train. Once again, we're on the highway to hell, <laughs> featuring the small devils who bounce up and down. Passengers also see a demon who resembles the judge from the courtroom scene. Or my ex-girlfriend, either one. Near the end of the scene, a towering green dragon emerges and attempts to burn the riders to a crisp. 
extra crispy. A glowing, a glowing light is seen in the back of its throat, and choking, coughing noises are heard while the motor car speeds away. Granted a reprieve, riders then escape to the ride's unloading area. When Disneyland Paris opened in 1992, guests found a Toad Hall similar to the full-size Toad Hall at Disneyland. But this wasn't a ride. It's actually a counter-service restaurant known as Toad Hall Restaurant. In keeping with Mr. Toad's setting in England, the establishment serves English fish and chips. In the late 1990s, rumors began circulating on the internet that Mr. Toad was an endangered species at Walt Disney World and was being considered to be replaced by a more marketable character you may know as Winnie the Pooh. While there was an, even an online petition to save Toad and an outcry by fans to keep the attraction open, it didn't matter. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride closed at the Magic Kingdom on September 7th, 1998, and eventually was replaced with The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. A few small tributes to Mr. Toad can be found in the Magic Kingdom if you look close enough, including paintings of Mr. Toad and Molly in Al's house in The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh attraction, and a statue of Mr. Toad that seems to come and go in a pet cemetery outside of the Haunted Mansion. You can also find a smaller version of the Toad Hall on the Storybook Land Canal Boats at Disneyland, which we will talk more about in the next episode. While you can no longer take a wild ride at Walt Disney World, fans of Mr. Toad can still hit the road at Disneyland and have a blast of nostalgia while doing so. So, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Um, I really enjoy the Disneyland version. Um, the Walt Disney World version, unfortunately, I never got on. Um, I It was open when I was there on my first trip, but I just never went on it. And then by the second time I got to Walt Disney World, it was already being uh, refurbished into Winnie the Pooh. So I never got to ride the Walt Disney World version, but of course you can look it up on YouTube. <laughs> um... It's a good thing YouTube exists to see these videos. Because um, the Walt Disney World version does look really cool with the two tracks. And I really, you know, it, just like Sheer says, If you could turn back time, then I would definitely go back, <laughs> if I could get in the time machine, I'd go back to 1995 Walt Disney World and ride Mr. Toad, along with many other rides that are no longer there. But, um... The two, the two version track seems pretty awesome, and obviously I'll never see those scenes, the different scenes, like the gypsy camp, um, but uh, I finally did get to ride the Disneyland version all the way in 2014 was the first time I've ever been on a version of this attraction, and it was very, I mean... There was a lot of buildup. I'm like, oh, cool. I can finally ride Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. And, you know, it's not, you know, it's not the most, uh, you know, uh, technologically advanced ride, shall we say. <laughs> I mean, it's like, like if you went from Tower of Terror or even like Haunted Mansion to this, you'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. Because um, it looks like, you know, cardboard cutouts. Uh, some of the stuff, but it's still a really fun ride, and it's cool because it's like, oh, this was like opening, day, this was an opening day attraction, um, and it's still there. Um, I enjoy the ride a lot. I went on three times that trip in 2014 to make up for never going on it, and I believe last year I went on it three times as well. So I've I've really made up uh, not getting on that ride more and more, and you know the the wait is never terrible. Um, for Mr. Toad, it is, you know, usually around 20, 25 minutes, 30, I think the most I saw it. Um, and you can't really go by that because the line actually moves very fast. So if it says 20 minutes, you're usually on it in 12, 15 minutes. So it's not that bad. Um, and it's an exciting queue because I know I always got to take a a selfie with the Mr. Toad statue. Everybody gotta do it, right? Um, 
so definitely take a selfie <laughs> with Mr. Toad and uh, send them to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll always enjoy that, seeing that statue. I'll say, hey, there it is. And also there's a hidden Mickey on the eye of that statue, by the way. Look for that. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun ride. And what other ride in Walt Disney, uh, or at Disneyland at least, and Walt Disney World uh, at the time, could you say you went to hell? <laughs> You know, it's a very interesting ending, and uh, it's just a fun ride overall. So if you're going to Disneyland, you've never been on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, definitely check it out, um, just to say you were on it. You know, some people are like, eh, but it's, it's definitely a fun ride. So uh, definitely take a wild excursion with Mr. Toad. All right, well, that's the show for this time. I'll be back next time with another episode where we're going to talk about the history of the storybook Land Canals, which is very exciting because I, en I enjoy that ride too. <laughs> I enjoy a lot of the rides we talk about on this show, so just, yeah, it's awesome. Until then, don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube, youtube.com slash hitchhoshow. You can like the show on Facebook, facebook.com slash hitchhoshow. Follow on the Twitter, at Hitcho Show, and the Instagram is also at Hitcho Show. And then you can also listen on Podbean. It's hitchhoshow.podbean.com if you want to hear the podcast version. And also download on, not Instagram, on iTunes <laughs> or Stitcher. Until next time, don't forget to... For the next episode, see ya.